Good afternoon everybody. Um, still in lockdown here so I thought I'd take the opportunity to give you a little bit of a closer look at my bike. She is a 2019 Kawasaki Versus 650 Tourer. Now I bought this bike just about 12 months ago. I think it was the first week of May 2019. Um, having passed my test just a few weeks earlier. Uh, and I have to say I'm pretty pleased with it. So I'm going to give you a few of the specs on this bike. Um, tell you just my views uh, and thoughts on it having just, just two and a half thousand miles on it and it being my first big bike so I'm not comparing it to anything I'm not an expert by any means but it's just my initial thoughts and my opinions on it so far so it's a 649cc parallel twin it produces about 68 brake horsepower at eight and a half thousand revs um, which for my sort of limited experience is more than ample. Uh, it produced about 64 newton meters of torque at 7,000 um, revs. Um, it's probably easier if I start front to back and go through the bike. Um, it's a 120, what is it? It's a 120, 60, 17 inch on the front. Um, it's got, um, twin 300 mil um, semi-floating pedal discs with twin potness and calipers um, it's got um, 41 mil upside down uh, shower forks which are adjustable um, uh, one side is rebound the other side is damping I don't know if you can see that very well but fully adjustable shower forks on the front and I have to say the front forks, I haven't touched the adjustment at all. Now, as it came stock, and the front forks are really nice. Um, I've talked about the engine a little uh, a bit already. As we work our way to the back, um, it's got a, a single shock on the back. I think it's a, a, a KYB, I think. Um, and But what is really, really nice, and I have found useful, um, when certainly when we want to tour, um, loaded up is it's remote adjustable for the preload um, I think it's got 24 clicks on the adjustment um, and what I've found as standard is it's a little bit soft so I wound it on eight clicks and it's perfect without the panniers and solo riding um, I really like the uh, the short stubby under slung exhaust I really like that and what that means is Obviously, when you've got the panniers fitted, you're not losing any space due to a, a cutout for the exhaust. It's really nice. Um, brakes on the rear. We've got a single pedal disc, 250mm with a single missing caliper. Um, work around the bike. Tires are 160-something. 160, 60, 17 on the on the rear. Um, working our way around, seat height is it's quite high. It's it's 840 millimeters, um, and that's quite high, but it is quite narrow here at the seat. So it's if you're shorter in the leg, it's quite hard to get on. But when you're on, you can get your legs very close to the bike. Uh, just to give you an, a clue. I'm bang on six foot tall with a 32 inch inside leg and I'm more than flat footed. I've actually got a bend in the knee there. So you can, you, you can, you don't be put off by the 840 mil seat height. Um, okay, it's got a 19 litre fuel tank, which is fantastic actually when you're, when you're doing long journeys or on tour. You can easily do 220 miles on a tank, no problem at all. Um, show you the switch gear a little bit uh, on the right hand side we've got kill switch starter um, adjustable front brake lever left hand side horn indicators hazard lights high low pass adjustable clutch lever and um, we've also got on the dash we've got oh, what's put my keys We've got an analog rev counter, which I like. I'm not a fan of the digital rev counters. Um, 
we've got digital dash uh, sorry digital speed we've got um, fuel indicator gear indicator clock um, overall mileage and then we've cycled through uh, we've got trip A, trip B uh, miles per gallon 60 miles per gallon I'm averaging at the moment and range so not loads but probably as much as you need and then when I purchased the bike let me just tell you what, what uh, uh, it came with being the Tourer uh, rather than the standard bike um, it came with the handguards uh, the quick fit panniers which I'll show you in a minute um, tank pad very subtle tank pad and the uh, Optimate battery connector the extra bits that I had um, fitted uh, I had the RNG mudguard extender just to uh, try and protect the exhaust a little bit and the radiator and RNG radiator guard um, the other bits I fitted myself I fitted the ultimate add-ons um, phone case which is fantastic um, totally totally waterproof I've dropped the, the case of the phone in absolutely no damage at all very easy to, to take off the bike very easy to pop the phone in I would highly recommend the ultimate add-ons phone case excellent piece of kit and then when I had the first service I had the um, 12 volt charger um, put in the dash here um, now disappointingly it is a 12 volt like a cigar lighter so you do need a USB adapter um, what else did we do yes I think uh, and then um, I also added I don't know if you can see this down here I added is that the best place to see it maybe not I added a Kappa rear hugger because two reasons one it stops all of the crud getting thrown up on your bike but also without that there it looks very open and exposed it just didn't look good at all I think adding the hugger uh, has made a uh, has made the bike look better made it look finished off properly um, yeah and then I added the uh, Givi monarchy rack and top box um, so there's there's plenty of uh, storage here for a, a good trip away show you the, the panniers it's all same key as the bike uh, we included the Kawasaki bags now I'm not a huge fan of the Kawasaki inner bags and I'll tell you why they're such a good fit <laughs> they're actually quite awkward but as you can see, you whereas a lot of bikes, especially adventure bikes, you get a cutout where the exhaust would be. You have no cutout here, um, which is really useful. Um, I might get this wrong, but I think they are 20 litres, I think. Maybe wrong. But what I really like about them is when you take them off, you just lift the catch here. And now it's going to get wrong. It's really not that difficult. There you go. When you lift them off, it's very clean. There's not loads of racking or scaffolding. Really, really clean. They just hook into these two slots here, slide over there, lock into place, and that's it. And honestly, they do come off easier than that. It's just I'm a bit of an idiot. <laughs> Hopefully they'll show you go on easier. That's it. On. Okay. So in summary, overall, one more minor minor niggle. And again, it's not just Kawasaki, it's loads of bikes. I start the bike. Daytime running lights. Okay, so you've got the two small lights at the top 
on one side. Why can't we have, we've got t twin headlights, why can't we have both headlights lit? Overall, I'm very happy. Um, I have no intention of selling it, none whatsoever. Um, it does, it's perfectly set up for longer distance, which is what I want to do when we're, we're out of this lockdown situation. So overall, I'm extremely pleased with it. I've no plans to do any big changes to it. I've no plans to sell it, but no intention of selling this. The only reason I would sell this if I could ever convince uh, my wife uh, to ride Pillion, which at the moment is going nowhere. But uh, if ever I can convince her to do that, that's the only time. I think two up it might be a little bit lacking. Um, but otherwise, for me at the moment, absolutely perfect. I knew there was something I'd forget. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say, to say a huge thank you um, to Motorev. Um, Craig and the gang, thanks very much for your big shout out to uh, MLC Motorcycling in your last video. It really is much appreciated. Thanks very much. And um, when all this lockdown's over, we'll buy you a beer. Get your time. Thank you very much. See, see you soon.